Welcome back to the Dry Fasting Club. I'm Yannick J. Wolf, and today we're going to be reviewing a video of August Dunning's called Short Dry Fasts, Huge Benefits. I think it's going to be a video talking about shorter dry fasts, which is going to be very interesting. Uh, let's get to it. Hello again. You know, I thought I'd talk about the shorter dry fast. For the longest time, I just did seven day dry fast. Seven days was the deal, seven days is what the Russian doctors did, uh, but they were doing it for therapy. So if you have a medical problem, you might want to do these longer dry fasts, or if you want to get rid of all your stored toxins over decades of eating bad food and just normal metabolism, do a seven day dry fast. But I learned something with my five day dry fast, which I'm sure a few of you have seen before. For all those newbies on here, um, Dry fasting is a state of fasting without drinking water. And you can extend it to, you know, 11 days and kinds of issues medically. But that's not what I'm interested in. My interest is in longevity. So what I want to do is use dry fasting to do that. But I also found out that a five-day dry fast is really cool for a lot of reasons. Number one, there's hardly any recovery time. There's not all the re refeeding and all that stuff. But we just want to remember, so he's talking about five days. Uh, and remember, he wrote a book, a protocol for seven days of dry fasting, which uh, probably beholds him a little bit to, to that strategy. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's see what he says about five days. You can just go right back to work and it does all this great stuff. It limits the amount of stem cells you're going to be pumping out because you're not going into regenerating cycles of daily activation during seven days, which is like five days of doing that. But after day three, your PKA is turned off, protein kinase. Stem cells throughout the body are stimulated to be in regeneration mode. Okay, well, I guess I'll expand on it a little bit more. Uh, most evidence points to stem cells peaking preparation for stem cells. So the peaking around day four to five, let me finish that thought. So they, they peak and usually once you start going past four to five days of fasting in general, and I think we can just assume dry fasting as well, there is a diminishing return or even potential to overdo it and cause stem cell exhaustion. So there is a chance that the seven and up days of dry fasting actually have a slightly negative or the same level of stem cell release as a five day dry fast. Uh, but of course, you get deeper things. You get deeper autophagy, osmotic uh, clearance, osmotic stress, autophagy. You get a much longer periods of uh, growth hormone. So there is a lot to it. But the stem cells, I'm not sold on it. I'm actually, I believe that that's not true. Um, and I, let's go back to what he said earlier. He basically said uh, they're faster. You can go back to work. You don't have to refeed. I don't know about that. I actually talk to people and usually I will recommend that they still take refeed seriously, even if they're doing a three day dry fast. Of course, people who have been on carnivore diets or low carb diets for a really long time and they breeze through the fasts, they're going to have a different opinion and they're going to have an easy time just jumping off of a three or five day straight into their carnivore diet. That's actually something that you see a lot, which I don't agree with. Um, so if you're new and experimenting, I, I don't agree with that. You need carbs in the refeed. That's very important. Uh, I'll see if I can touch on that later. But I just wanted to address um, the fact about the refeed. Take the refeed seriously. Sure, if you're doing something like a 36-hour fast, you know, that's like two nights, one day and two nights, you can probably don't even have to ease your way out of it. Should be fine. But once it starts hitting three and up, you want to take it seriously. You don't want to bring in any complications. I feel like it's a little irresponsible to say that because we have to remember things like the initial state of the person, the initial person's health state, right? That's going to affect how easy they have it in the fast, how easy they can jump off of it. Their prior diet, you know, are they fat adapted? Are they carb adapted? Their fasting experience and adaptation to fasting. Do they fast a lot? Is their body really well adapted to it? Done it so many times? Or is it, are they brand new into it and they're going to have tons of pains and adaptation issues? 
And then uh, the ability to relax and meditate, which is also a very important thing in fasting. If I want to segue off of that a little bit, the parasympathetic nervous system is our rest and relax system. People who have a lot of experience with uh, meditation and being able to relax have an advantage of allowing the body to transition from that glycogen loss to that fat adaptation stage. So, you know, the hardest days of a fast, which are somewhere around day two and three before you enter that deep ketosis, that big sigh of relief. Ah, I feel good. Yeah, I'm thirsty as hell, but I'm starting to really get into the stride of this ketone energy. But to bridge through that, someone with a meditative capacity, someone who knows about meditation, has done it a lot and are able to sort of meditate and relax throughout those days, are going to increase their parasympathetic nervous system expression, which is going to make their cells more insulin sensitive. Look up this connection, okay? GABA, relaxation and insulin sensitivity. It's also why so many miraculous results people get on cannabis, like CBD oil. What does that do? The main mechanism is relaxation. The relaxation suddenly helps cancer, suddenly helps all of these chronic illnesses because there is a big um, correlation there. Okay, a little bit off topic. I think we can just keep going with the video. Let's see what he says about stem cells. And uh, you end up with all these great things. The cool thing about that is it doesn't matter how long you're in this regeneration stuff. When you actually start a regeneration of your stem cells, and it goes from daughter cells to transit amplifying and all these, these phases of replication. It's one way. You can't go back. So whatever you release, you get new stem cells. That's just a foregone conclusion. Even a three-day dry fast, if you get into this and turn on your muse cells, which happens on the third day, you get muse cells introduced into the bloodstream. So the three to five-day dry fast are really cool. Why? Lots of stem cell talk. So... August uses a lot of big words when it comes to stem cells. You know, he talks about muse cells, one of the rarest stem cells with a very powerful effect. He talks about daughter progenitor cells. All of this stuff is to the layman, to the regular watcher, just goes over their head. It's not a big deal. I don't think you really have to know much about this, but there's a concept that you should understand with stem cells. Stem cell release with fasting. I know you've heard about this because it's one of the the main touted benefits of fasting in the first place. So stem cells, when it comes to fasting, get primed to release, okay? So IGF levels go down because insulin is not being used. You're not eating nutrients. There's no signals to the body that food's coming in. So IGF goes down. Growth hormone goes up, okay? In this case, growth hormone is not there for growth, you know, in general, growth hormone helps us grow. But in the case of fasting, growth hormone goes up to, pr to create a protective effect on the body. So it goes up, it stops protein from being catabolized. So your muscle doesn't get eaten as quickly. Uh, but it also increases fat burn to provide the energy so it doesn't have to be taken from the protein, the muscles. And at the same time, you know, autophagy increases on fasting. Why? Because without the autophagy, the preservation state that the growth hormone is trying to do would not work because where would it get the building blocks for at least preservation and fixing? That comes from autophagy. Autophagy is going to eat up the bad stuff and it's going to spit out the building blocks. The building blocks of proteins, amino acids are going to be used by the growth hormone to preserve your muscle and hopefully improve it, clean it up, eat the bad stuff, maybe build a little bit of the good stuff, but in general, in a balancing state, it keeps it at a fair balance. You're not really going to grow. There's no anabolic, there's not a lot or no anabolic effects um, thing. It's more of a catabolic effect. You're in a catabolic state, but being preserved through growth hormone. So this is actually important. Stem cells. I know I, just, I kind of like meandered around a little bit. Stem cells in this case get primed by the state. So the state puts them almost to sleep. You can think of it like strawberries. You know, they, a lot of strawberries require a freeze period before they actually blossom for the next year. So they need to be, they need to go through a freeze, or at least I think when you're planting the seeds, they need to go through some sort of freeze to tell them that they went into a slumber. And now when the heat comes back again, now they can explode again, explode and grow. And that's 
hopefully a parable to our stem cells that you can understand. They get primed, they go to sleep because of this state that fasting gives them. However, there's a maximum amount that you can get your stem cells to get primed. Uh, and from most of the papers that I've read, we're looking at around four to five days of fasting before you get diminishing returns. That also correlates to August talking about, oh, that I had a five-day dry fast that healed my cornea, and then I had a three-day that healed my nose. That actually makes sense with this idea, because even if you're doing a seven or a nine-day dry fast, it looks like the stem cell benefit is going to be very similar to a five-day dry fast, almost the same thing, just when it comes to stem cells. So that would make a lot of sense. You get a ton of release at three, four, five days. So um, if we're trying to maximize everything, let's just say five days. And here's the important thing that I don't want to miss from all of this. When they're going to come out of that state, they're not replicating in that state. What happens if you stay in ketosis and you don't give it that shock to tell it to wake up, to grow? It requires carbs, but you chose ketosis. So now you're refeeding with fats and proteins only. You are not sending the stem cells the signal to grow. Yeah, growing, and now we have to worry about mutagenic risks, and that's why cancer needs to have a specific approach, which is a low-protein, low-fat approach, and why it's important to be in nature so you don't breathe in mutagens, but I'll talk about that in another episode sometime. Uh, so you need the carbs for the stem cells. This is actually very important, and you'll see that the carbs actually propel the growth. They, they stimulate it almost like a steroid shock telling them, let's go. It's called hyperproliferation, I'm pretty sure, of stem cells, and they require the carbs. And I, I, it's important to mention this because I've, talked to, I've mentioned this a few times in the past, and it's always a very uh, popular question that gets asked a lot. You know, they're like, I'm trying to tell them, yeah, from cells, and then people say, why? So I'll have to probably do an episode on that and bring out a bunch of papers and explain it. And let's keep in mind that we don't want to always go for too long for these fasts for ketosis because there is an exhaustion effect that needs to be taken into account. All right, let's keep going. Well, think about it. If you do a dry fast starting on a Thursday and Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you quit it, or start on a Wednesday, over the weekend you quit it, back to work, Monday, no problem. If you want to start your dry fast, a three-day dry fast on Friday, you're done on Sunday, go back to work on Monday. If you really want to do yourself a real big favor, try one of these longer dry fasts at one point because you're going to get rid of stuff from the sequestered toxins in your cellular system that will reduce the likelihood of anything really happening to you medically. That's the cool thing about dry fasting. But these shorter dry fasts, really interesting. Like I said, I did a five-day because I had to stop a seven-day, but by the end of five-day dry fast, healed up my cornea on this eye where it had been scratched. Years ago when I did my first seven day dry fast, got rid of a bladder infection on day three. I also got my sense of smell restored on day three after losing it for like three years. So, you know, this is interesting because <laughs> these things are short, three to five days, five days for the most intense positive effects, but, um, three to five day dry fast, I can't recommend them enough. You'll get used to doing longer ones because of these shorter ones. Okay, just uh, to keep in mind, um, August also talks about being on a low carb diet, or at least in the last year or two, he's gone a little more carnivore. And that's a trend that I see happening a lot. Once people feel like their benefits are waning, you know, you're either fasting too much or intermittent fasting and suddenly things are just not going so well. It's, you're not getting the same high that you got earlier, um, either from fasting, either from low carb, and you start pushing it to more extremes and then you start feeling great. And that's a very, very common thing I see. The problem is what happens once your state starts to deteriorate again, sure, in a few years. What are you going to do? That's the problem. But also something to keep in mind that uh, going from low carb into a fast, someone just regularly normal person preps with a low carb diet, they're going to have glycogen depletion. They're going to get more effects from a three day dry fast than somebody who went in with full glycogen reserves into the fast. That's just makes common sense. It makes it gets a little bit uh, more muddy and difficult to explain when someone's been a low carber for many, many, many years, then 
the calculations, the equation changes a little bit. But we have to keep in mind his diet choices. Not sure exactly three years ago where he was, but let's assume a little bit of a anti-sugar diet. But the short ones are really important. So I'm here in the shade in a, in a, a beautiful Sunday and uh, thinking about all you guys out there that have written me about the things that have happened on just three and five day dry fast. And I concur. I mean, this is really a great deal. So my advice is do some dry fasts. You do it nightly anyway. You don't drink or eat while you sleep. But uh, do a two, three, four day dry fast, five day dry fast, see how it goes. I think you'll be surprised how you're not thirsty, you're not hungry. It's a little boring maybe, but for the most part, you end up with more energy after day three. You end up having everything back to normal, back to when the thing ends and there's no recovery time. You don't have to do the coconut water or the broth and all that stuff. You just haven't taken your body through that kind of an experience to need that. But uh, short dry fast, man, it's the way to go. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Okay, great. Good stuff. Um, yeah, I'll finish off here as well. Just got to remember, there are some biases. Everybody's got them. August has a seven-day dry fast bias, which is nice how he's talking about the shorter ones because his book and probably last few years was biased towards seven days and everything is a seven day, seven day this, seven day that. You've got Filinov who owns, who runs a retreat. So he, their whole system is biased towards nine day dry fasts. They're going to push them more than anything else as the one goal. And then obviously I'm biased with the Scorch Protocol with five day dry fasts. Everyone's got their little bit of biases. Um, however, that's just how the world works, you know? Um, the problem becomes when you get pigeonholed. And the beauty about dry fasting in the dry fasting world is usually anybody in it is an advocate of truth and they try their hardest to push for truth. And truth requires you never to pigeonhole yourself in one direction. For the purpose of educating people, it makes sense. But uh, like you see here, August transgresses that line of seven days and talks about the short fasts being good. Uh, Filinov, I'm pretty sure, does it as well. And then just so you guys know, even though I talk about five days, I'm in this beautiful position where I don't have to put as much risk on my therapies because the five days are not as dangerous as a seven and definitely not as dangerous as a nine. But I've consulted so many people and I've sent them to Filinov. I've sent them to Michelle Del Dewey um, to these fasting retreats for their nine days because sometimes... That makes the most sense. But the craziest part is not every illness that comes through the dry fasting club requires those long fasts. So you don't even have to take those risks a lot, a lot of times. You know, it's pretty crazy because I'm of the firm belief that 90% of people that I've talked to, and I've talked to extremely sick people, like maybe not absolute Lyme disease sick, but very close and they can get away with uh, mixing, mix matching a few of these therapies and these bioenergetic concepts and do a five day dry fast and their whole world comes back. Uh, yeah, but life is complicated, right? Not everybody's going to react the exact same way. We continue, we continue on. Um, and yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Until next time, good luck on your dry fasting journey. See ya. The world is not what it seems. You can liberate yourself. The Scorch Protocol is built around dry fasting. Subscribe if you want access to a private Discord server, access to dry fasting plans and charts, codes for discounts, things like human growth hormone, ivermectin, slow release T3, and more, or just to support the site. Your health is just around the corner.